Hello, in this session we shall discuss nosocomial or hospital acquired infections. The aim of this session is to gain an understanding of the hospital acquired infections and by the end of the session you should be able to discuss the following risk factors, routes of infection, types of infections and complications, prevention and finally oral hygiene care in hospitalized patients to minimize the risk of nosocomial infections. Nosocomial infections or hospital acquired infections can be defined as those occurring within either 48 hours of hospital admission or within three days of discharge or within 30 days of an operation. Three factors contribute to the prevalence and incidence of nosocomial infections. Firstly, there is presence of microorganisms in the hospital environments and uh, lots of immunocompromised patients due to a variety of underlying conditions and the risk of transmission of pathogens between staff and patients and amongst patients. Nosocomial infections may affect 1 in 10 hospital admissions and prevalence is twice as high in ITUs and the situation has been particularly complicated uh, in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, nosocomial infections for any reason uh, increase the length of hospital stay and increase the risk of morbidity and mortality and prior to COVID up to 5,000 deaths were reported annually in the UK alone with a three to five thousand pounds increase in treatment costs per patient. The risk factors for developing nosocomial infections could relate to underlying health status of the patients and some of the risk factors include advanced age, malnutrition, alcoholism, heavy smoking, chronic lung disease, and uncontrolled diabetes. Also certain acute states increase the risk of nosocomial infections, particularly surgical interventions, trauma and burns. Invasive procedures which are considered a risk factor include endotracheal or nasal intubation for general anesthesia or uh, maintenance of airway in uh, comatose patients, central venous catheterization, extracorporeal renal support, surgical drains, nasogastric tubes, tracheostomy or uh, use of a urinary catheter. Uh, treatments which are specifically associated with Increased risk of nosocomial infections include blood transfusion, recent antimicrobial therapy, increasing the risk of antibiotic resistance, immunosuppressive treatments, recumbent position over prolonged periods, parenteral nutrition, and increased length of stay in the hospital. So, this image depicts the chain of events which may lead to nosocomial infections in hospital environments. So the presence of microorganisms in hospital environment may find a suitable reservoir amongst human beings, whether patients or healthcare staff uh, or uh, attendants of the patients, animals or inanimate objects. The microorganisms may exit an infected individual either through blood, intestinal tract, respiratory tract or skin or mucous membranes and may cause infection either through the airborne route, direct contact or through a vector and may gain entry into another individual through any of these routes. And nosocomial infections are much more likely in patients who are susceptible to infection. So as discussed in the previous slide, increasing age of the patients, uh, 
health status uh, such as presence of any chronic illness uh, immunosuppression malnutrition therapies with immunosuppressive drugs chemotherapy radiation or surgery and this then leads to uh, further spread of infections in the hospital environment so prior to the start of the covid-19 pandemic uh, the most common microorganisms associated with nosocomial infections include coagulase negative staphylococci which may lead to blood stream infection pneumonia urinary tract infections surgical site infections and others uh, other microorganisms which could be involved are staph aureus uh, which are also closely associated with pneumonia pseudomonas originosa again closely associated with pneumonias and utis enterococci enterobacteriaceae e coli candida albicans klebsiella pneumoniae and following the start of the covid-19 pandemic obviously uh, the sars-cov-2 virus is one of the main concerns and continues to be so one of the most recognized complications of nosocomial infections in susceptible hosts uh, is sepsis or septic shock and may lead to hypovolemia due to capillary leakage uh, which can be exacerbated by venodilatation following sepsis and poor cardiac filling uh, it may also lead to macrovascular and microvascular changes such as arterial hypotension shunting of blood to vital organs microvascular changes such as vasodilatation uh, due to low systemic vascular resistance precapillary shunting and this may lead to impaired micro microcirculatory flow uh, and hypoxia microvascular thrombosis and eventually may lead to cell injury uh, following mitochondrial dysfunction uh, lack of oxygen utilization shift to anaerobic respiration uh, metabolic acidosis etc and moreover it may lead to a cardiogenic shock due to myocardial depression and uh, ventricular dilatation uh, in an attempt to maintain the stroke volume so a number of circulatory and cardiovascular changes can contribute to uh, a fatal outcome following sepsis so the cornerstone of prevention of nosocomial infections is effective cross infection control policy in the hospital hand hygiene remains the most effective and universal measure to minimize the risk of cross infection not only in hospital environments but in any environment and we've experienced this with uh, the covid-19 pandemic that hand hygiene remains a fundamental measure to minimize the risk of cross infection so frequent hand washing and use of alcohol gels appropriate sterilization and disinfection of equipments and environments use of appropriate personal protective equipment aseptic technique for invasive procedures skin preparation with antiseptics before injections or surgery isolation of infected patients and appropriate and judicious use of antibiotics uh, in excessive use of antibiotics may be actually counterproductive because it will promote development of resistant strains which would be much more difficult to manage so appropriate antibiotic guardianship is required and safe disposal of hospital waste including sharps and 
learning from our experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic, we need to add appropriate social distancing measures in hospital settings, reducing the number of visitors in hospital environments, particularly in high dependency units and uh, geriatric wards and ITUs. Poor oral hygiene in hospitalized patients can contribute to increased incidence of nosocomial infections and worse outcomes. And in this regard, dentate patients are considered to be much more susceptible to colonization by microorganisms responsible for nosocomial infections. And dental prosthesis can also act as a reservoir for microorganisms if not cleaned properly. So therefore, your role as a dentist, dental therapist and hygienist is extremely important to provide education to hospital staff uh, regarding oral hygiene care in hospitalized patients. And this is an area which still needs a lot more improvement and a lot more education of the uh, support staff in the hospital environment. One of the big concerns in hospital environments is the risk of ventilator associated pneumonia, particularly in the ITUs. And there is growing evidence that use of antimicrobial mouthwashes and gels combined with effective toothbrushing can actively contribute to reducing the incidence of ventilator associated pneumonia. A recent Cochrane review shows that oral hygiene care including chlorhexidine mouthwash or gel reduces the risk of developing ventilator associated pneumonia in critically ill patients from 25 to about 19 percent. And one of the challenges is that the ITU staff, particularly the nursing staff, are not always trained appropriately to provide adequate oral hygiene care and this is further complicated by the workload on these uh, critical units uh, which has been you know obviously made more challenging by the COVID pandemic. So you have a role to play here. Uh, dental professionals and organizations can collaborate with uh, hospital staff to organize training for uh, nursing staff to provide oral hygiene care to hospitalized patients and thereby help reduce the incidence and prevalence of nosocomial infections. I shall signpost you to some very useful resources on mouth care in patients who are hospitalized, but the general principles involved include appropriate use of PPE and effective suction of oropharyngeal and retropharyngeal secretions prior to providing mouth care, use of a soft toothbrush and toothpaste to clean teeth and tongue, and application of chlorhexidine mouthwash or gel to the oral soft tissues. Uh, obviously, you would rule out chlorhexidine allergy in a given patient prior to its use, and then suctioning out the excess. And finally, applying a moisturizer on the lips to ensure there are no cracks or cuts on the lips, uh, which may lead to breach of skin and increase the risk of uh, nosocomial infections. Now, you would also need to be mindful about the uh, alertness of the patient. Uh, obviously, in semi comatose patients, uh, or patients with altered conscious levels, consciousness levels, uh, there is an increased risk of aspiration pneumonia, and you would need to ensure uh, that uh, patients who are unconscious have appropriate protection of the airway, either in the form of a tracheostomy tube or an endotracheal tube, and this is something you would discuss with the uh, relevant hospital staff prior to providing oral hygiene care. This table depicts the most important microorganisms 
which can be responsible for cross infection in dental settings including the SARS-CoV-2 virus, herpes simplex virus, varicella zoster virus, different viruses associated with hepatitis, HIV and then also mycobacterium tuberculosis, pseudomonas, legionella particularly in dental unit, dental unit water lines and staph aureus along with their incubation periods. So in summary nosocomial infections are a recognized risk in hospital environments and can cause significant morbidity and mortality in affected patients. You need to be aware of the risk factors and prevention strategies particularly in the dental environment and also uh, you should be able to provide professional advice to your medical colleagues working in hospital environments on uh, providing mouth care and oral hygiene uh, to susceptible patients and this is a very useful resource produced by the Higher Education England uh, on mouth care in hospitalized patients and uh, I would encourage you to read it. Uh, this would be quite useful. And this is the reference to the Cochrane review on uh, mouth care matters uh, and it provides a critical evaluation of the underlying evidence related to mouth care and the risk of nosocomial infections particularly ventilator associated pneumonia.